let's go ahead and work on setting up a grid. Uh, I have a floor plan here. And in this video, I'm going to show about setting up a view in this example uh, of a loft. A uh, few things to point out. Uh, you can see uh, some preliminary work that I've done where I set up a one foot grid system on this quarter inch scale drawing. And what that helps me to do is plot things out quickly without having to measure uh, everything again and again. Uh, we've got perimeter walls that are already existing with windows. And um, when we go to plot these out later, I'm gonna make some little notes about the fact that they have a four foot uh, sill height To orient ourselves as I talk through the drawing, we're going to be creating a perspective of the north wall. And this gives us the opportunity to see what we have as an area that is open to above. And what you're gonna see in the video is where we have 20 foot high ceilings in this area here where it's open to above and then on the note here I have that we have first four ceilings on the nine of nine feet uh, in the area here which is a dash line so we have the second level up above is what this is indicating there's some stairs over here where these are going up uh, I've I've darkened them in so you can see them better in the video they're not so pertinent to what we're doing with this particular view I've put in the triangle to give you the main idea of that uh, view that we're going to have. Not that it's necessarily going to cut off. It, 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 may, it, it could go past it. We're going to set up the grid and see how it is. Um, but it gives you the main idea of what are you looking at and can you see the overhang. So here is the person viewing. And that person is going to have an eye line level of five feet, which means we set our VP at five. We have, uh, excuse me, the five feet, yeah, five feet above finished floor. And then the other five feet designation is here is that this, if this is the north wall, this is our east, we're standing five feet over from that edge. So we've got two coordinates to go ahead and get it set up with our VP when we start setting up our grid. The next part about this uh, to consider is how far back we are from the back wall. And measuring this, it measures 22 feet from the back wall. Now to give myself a little bit of cushion, I'm going to see within the paper if I can't go ahead and add the two feet on to make set my MP at 24 feet. That way I can, sometimes if it's the grid is small it may get distorted off the edge um, so we add a little bit of extra space in there okay so those are the main numbers to keep in mind uh, we also have structural columns and those uh, are going to go up that 20 foot high ceiling because that's holding up um, the ceiling above and we'll go from there so again, I'm going to follow these numbers and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set it up on the grid. The width of my back plane measuring in quarter inch scale, the width of my back wall plane uh, is showing that it's 24 feet across. So we have 24 feet in width from where this wall is on the back side of this kitchen. So we have like a refrigerator here, there's a sink, um, looks like we have a dishwasher here, although that would be a dash line. Okay, so we have that, we've got the cooktop there. We know standard heights on that, we can take care of that when we start plotting, but right now we're just trying to get the grid down. All right, so this is that front part of the wall. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. I'm gonna go ahead in that back wall plane, the width, I've set the grid paper down below. Um, for the grid itself on the back, I've taken grid paper and then I've utilized a roll of a 18 inch wide sketch paper uh, so that it's best transparent for you to see the grids underneath as we draw. You could have used vellum as well. Um, but also, 
you know, it, it's going to work fine when we go ahead and set our vellum over top of it. That's the one that I would say, you know, when you get your vellum, that that's going to be something that uh, is a uh, more stable piece of paper to do in your final drawing. Okay. All right, so we're going to go the 24 feet wide. I'm just gonna set it up with a basic pencil for right now. And then I'll come in and I wanna do it in a bolder ink so I can see the edges. I have 20 foot high ceilings in here, so I wanna just, I wanna figure out where I wanna have it for it. That would be the bottom and that would be the top. I wanna have plenty of room to come forward for the foreground. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shift it up and I'm actually gonna take it up to the top of my paper. So I have the 20 foot high ceilings. I marked out what I had, it's gonna go over to here. So I'm gonna frame it with the grid paper. And we know that the benefit to the grid paper is I'm not drawing the entire back wall plane in the interest of time. That does the work for me. I do have to say that that is one thing that when you do it, I, I try not to count the boxes once I start trying to work on that back wall plane if there's a lot of them or I'm, I'm deep in thought with how I'm going to do my next step or something else. I literally will still take the background and I'll, I'll measure out what it is, um, but this can work for that. All right. Now, uh, I'm gonna go back to my VP, and it says I have to be five feet over from this wall, because again, we're looking this direction, five feet over from here, and then I'm standing five feet off of the ground, above finished floor. I'm gonna do that with my pencil first so I don't make a mistake. So I'm gonna come five feet over, and again, this isn't too many. If I was a bunch of a number of feet, I would still take my scale and mark it over it does help for less error. So we've got five feet over and then my bar here. And we've got five feet up. And then you can see where you are with your lines. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the permanent VP um, in the marker. And that way, see that very clearly. So here's my VP. Okay. The next thing that I find pretty helpful is uh, let's go ahead and we're going to, let's set out the corners of it. I'd like you to start to see, and if, and if you weren't sure what your view is, this is a really nice way to go ahead and see what that's going to look like and see if it's what you want. You can see where it is positioned on the board. Uh, you can see what your view is as well. So I'm going to take my, my uh, pen and I'm going to go from the VP to this corner and I'm going to come on out. And then I'm going to do the top corner, which is going to require me to do the top as well. To move my bar. So I'm making sure that it lines up. If you're off with your grid at all, it could be because it's not going in the center. Like here, I would be too low to that. So we're gonna move that over. I'm gonna just touch it slightly in the corner. And now that I know, now I know I'm very exact to that. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna go through this, and then I'm gonna come off the corner. Again, going back over, making sure that it hits the center of both those marks. I'll come back in here. And I'm gonna then take this line to this. And this is probably the part that doesn't make any sense, right? We, we're just setting up the grid. You use the system because you have to figure out what's gonna look if, if we go by what we think it's going to look like, uh, we, we may be off. And the grid is to get this set up. Now, later on, it, it's going to be something you're probably not going to need. If you train yourself enough to practice with this, you'll start to know what it should look like. But we're starting the early infancy of getting to know how to work this, all right? 
All right, we've got the lines. Now we can see what this is going to set up to be. Now, how far my eye is up off the floor establishes what we call a horizon line. And that horizon line is basically, here's my eye level all the way across that back wall. So my eye is in the center. And where, the, where we measure the MP will be off to the side. And this is where my grid will cut off. And therefore, that's why especially, you know, you're going to measure here. I just, I don't bother to use this in this section here. We have a floor line. And I'm going to go ahead and take that off to the side. You could set your MP off to the left. I'm setting mine off to the right because this is my nearest wall to work from. And this is what these lines are showing. This is the wall coming at me. This is your floor line. I'm just gonna put FL. And then this is your HL. Okay, this is your HL. We've gotta come over because we're standing the 22 feet back. I had mentioned earlier that I'm gonna to try to do a 24 feet. Now, what I typically do is I do it off of this wall. Come on over here. And what that means is by the time I run all of my marks through here, that'll give me plenty of foreground to work with. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and um, Carry this down here just so you see how far it's coming out, okay? And this is what I measured 24 feet over. And here is my MP. That's the measuring point. That's identifying how far back I'm standing away from the back wall. And we had talked about how that was why, it, how we got that. The next thing to do, and like I say, there are some boxes here you could do that. Uh, if you want to go ahead and you make your mark right in the middle, or I can take it and do the foot measurements, but there's no need to put the, the marks up on the line. I know sometimes the directional sheets and things you'll see in the books show that, but you're really just carrying it down. They're just trying to share with you how, why you're taking it down or how you're getting that uh, and working from that. So the rest I'm off of the grid. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a, a bigger piece of grid paper. I just tend to have the eight and a half by 11s because of all the kits for school. Okay, so this takes us over to that last MP. I've set foot marks down on my floor line and the next job for me is to take my triangle and run it dead center between the MP and the line. right through here. And I've, I've debated in some ways um, in, in thinking about making the video here for class, should I, should I just do this and uh, maybe do a zoom and then I can cut out parts to not spend as much time. But what I want you to do is I want you to see how this investment of time pays off and exactly what I'm doing. So I'm making sure I'm dead center through most of these marks. And as you bring it forward, you should be seeing them gradually getting bigger with the spacing. If you don't do that, like here, I gotta move mine up. If you don't do that, this is where your grid's gonna be off. And if your floor isn't correct, everything else is not going to be correct either. So I, I go through and, and do it. And uh, if you already know what I'm doing and you're fine, then this gives you the option to speed up the video uh, as you watch it. I'm gonna take the time to go ahead and go through it. If you're finding things look distorted, I just wanted you to see um, how and why it's important to spend the time early on. How can you spend your time and why is it important? It's funny because once you move this here, you gotta go back and make sure this one's good. <laughs> it like tends to shift it without realizing it. You're pivoting it off this MP. So I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. Wasn't quite in the center. Make sure it's in the center. 
And though I'm doing colored markers for, um, you'll see, I'm gonna do them for the different, the wall plane, the floor plane. I'm not trying to highlight the blue so you could see where the corners of the walls are. I would say that that's pretty darn helpful uh, to seeing the, not only in the video, but even yourself, when we start laying that vellum over top, it can get a little bit tricky to see um, what you're working with. And it probably also feels pretty tedious. Now, will you draw some of these perspectives for clients? Maybe. Um, you've got, you'll have uh, you know the option to see vid these videos to set it up. You could use standard grids. There are standard grids you could do and plot it in, just kind of standing back at certain distances. The main thing, though, is you're going to utilize this as a tool to know, okay, if I sketch out an idea for a client, we're talking out ideas, I'm sitting with them at their living room table, I've got to sketch out an idea and I need to understand how everything goes back to that VP. There's two point perspectives you can do as well where it goes back to two vanishing points. We're just trying to do something simple here uh, with the one point where the wall is flat, right? And then what we'll do is I'm going to check this first and see if it gets bigger as it comes closer. All right. I'm not liking how this one's not working here. So let me go back to the MP and let me see if I was centered on that. Okay. Yeah, that one. Here, here, here. Yep. And then I'm going to make sure with this one, this one, yeah. And then I guess it should just get bigger. Maybe I did my line wrong for some reason. Okay. Center, center, center. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Go ahead and do it. I'm going to go with pencil on the ground just to get started. I want to make sure that this is all right. It'll it'll change color different to the rest. And the fact that I have it outlined in blue and the purple, um, that will help as well. So I'm taking the lines across, setting it up on the bar. I'm taking it over to here, and wherever it stops, that's where I'll go up for my sidewall planes. So I'm going to come in here, and I can see it's starting to increase in size, so that's good. When it's that far back, it's gonna be hard to tell um, with some of those. I'm rolling my pencil as I go across because I wanna make sure that when I get to the back, I have a thin line weight and I can plot it out. All right, so we're gonna come on in here, cross, come across. Again, just making sure that it's dead center on the line. Rolling my pencil across as I go. It's a little tricky because I'm right-handed. I tend to like to go this direction, but my mark's over here. So I'm just going to keep that consistent angle as I go across. Rolling my pencil as I go. It's like I'm sharpening it as I go. A little more lead. All right, so far so good. And this is the one I wanted to see if it's still gonna go. Yes, okay. Yep. Maybe it was the line. Now I've, I've got 
the bar. I'm just going to go across. If I do my mark, I can make that work. I'm going to go across this direction. And now I have that front line here. All right, so we've got the foreground, and as it comes closer to me, the spacing gets bigger. I can take up my lines off the side, and I'll go ahead and I will do that in a red. This is gonna call. This is gonna call for me to pull out the. Let's see, where's my big gun here? There we go. There's my big gun. All right, I'm gonna go across here, and because I can make it all the way, I've got this nice big triangle. I'm gonna make sure that it's right on that center mark where the floor line hits that uh, wall plane. And I'm gonna make sure I have the mark there and I'm gonna pull it down. I'm gonna do just a little dot with my pen here, making sure it's right in the middle. And then I'm gonna pull it down from the ceiling. I'm gonna to come to this one, do the same thing. Center mark. Pull down, center mark, pull down. Oops, and I kind of I just did it over the plane. It went through the middle, but I gotta take my time and not talk. So I'm just gonna work on that and not talk. Now that's fading out, um, trying to have you see here. This is fading out um, on the, tilt that down. That's fading up out at the top. Uh, and that's okay. We'll just go ahead and kind of have it start going down. Uh, but I just want to make sure you see that it's fading out there, but that's okay. We, we're only going to be able to see so much with our cone of vision, which is really going to do something more like this. Bring that forward a little bit more. In setting up the camera, I wanted to make sure that it gives you a good view. Let me go ahead and raise it up a little bit more. Let's see if you can. I want you to see the ceiling as well as the floor and the sides. I think we're good because we have the MP already set up over here. All right, let's see what we've got. I'm going to be able to do so that'll come up and then because I want you to still see the floor line here so all right okay let's keep going This example is to help you see what 
how and how we set it up for a little a taller ceiling it's really not any different than what we've been doing before but it's just making sure that that back wall plane is the 20 foot high ceiling where for most things that we've been doing demonstrations on in class time it's only been like a 10 foot ceiling for that first floor now we've got to make it much taller area uh, I'm gonna switch colors and I'm going to go ahead and go with a uh, green now. In fact, I'm gonna go, this is not quite an emerald green. All right, so I've chosen to do all the vertical lines and then these horizontal lines here so that you can see how it's gonna work. Now, in theory, what you should be able to do, and you may need to do this as well, uh, is that you're gonna to have to have a ceiling, and I will go ahead and do that in the blue. The ceiling lines can also help you figure out the details that you guys need to show for the ceiling above. All right, so if you were leaving it as is, uh, you've got explore, exposed joists, and there's some examples um, in the slide presentation um, about what these things look like. Go ahead and put this in. And again, we're just always going back to the VP, and I'm going along with the VP to the one foot mark. Going up here, go to the VP to that mark. I really don't like pulling up, I'm not using the medium dark enough. Okay, so VP to this foot mark, here's my line. And even if I don't use all of this, um, it does give me the chance to have it in case I need it because once that vellum lays on top of this I don't want to be pulling it up to draw more lines because I need the guides so I would just go ahead and put it in
Okay, so there we have it. We've got an idea of the directions. Um, and then what we would do is you can connect it. So if I'm on target, I should be able to connect my two ends here and establish that. They should be connecting if I'm accurate and they're looking pretty good. Luckily, yes. Yay. So I'm connecting from the green over to the red and they are meeting where the ceiling and the wall meet. If it isn't, sometimes I just split it real close to it, but I would check before I do the line in case there's something really strange going on. And rather than focusing on all just one and having it come out, um, getting it set up now helps me check. Like here, I'm slightly off between this one. I'm just gonna split the difference. I'm gonna come up a little higher and just split the difference as close as I can. Same thing with this one. But that was that area on the floor that I was wondering about. Okay, I'll do something pretty darn close here. And split the difference, yeah. Bring that up a little more. Split between the two. And when it gets this close anyway, it's not gonna be visible. So there's the ceiling. And I'm gonna come in with my colors again and I'm just gonna finish up the rest and that way we can keep going on with the rest of what we need to do. Getting a little lazy there. <laughs> I might need to go over that and make sure. It's probably a measurement that I'm going to need. Especially I'm um, back here because I have to think about what is my window height on the east wall. Whoops, shoot. I hit the drafting dot. Okay. There we go. Because it's going to be four feet off the floor, then one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, so that'll help me with that line. All right.
Again, just as a reminder, I'm finding all of the one foot marks around my back wall plane. And in fact, because I'm standing right here, I can just take it down the middle. It's coming right at me. And I'm going to every one foot mark and going back to that VP. Because anything that is perpendicular to that back wall is going to get drawn back to the VP. Or I'm going to use my bar to draw it perfectly horizontal. The only thing that changes that is when you have a piece of furniture at an angle or it's a circle. So always think of this as like an investment in your time that it definitely is worth your time to set up the grid and the time to make sure that it's accurate. And if you're good, then you can just fast forward through the video. I've heard you can set it at double time to for your speed. Still haven't figured out how to do that, but I've heard you can. And the really important part again is keep rolling that pencil. Rolling it so it's like you're sharpening it as you, you still have to keep clicking it out, but that's how you're gonna get that nice line quality. Pull it across your tool and spin it. One plane to go. Again, the one foot marks up off the floor. And this is where um, we're going to differentiate over on this side of the room with that nine foot high first floor ceiling versus the 20 foot high ceiling. Okay, we know that this is the horizon line, so it just simply goes across. Okay, we got the VP and the one foot mark here. I see my line weight runs better when I don't fight gravity and pull down with my pen. Okay, I could come over that way. Put on the foot mark here. All right, I've got my base. Now, what's interesting to me is. I mean, it seems like these should be square, but they're not. Remember, it's getting farther away, so it's going to stretch it out. So you just work the grid, and you have it set up. 
We've got different colors uh, for different planes to help us see the differences. And right now what we've got is we've got the back wall plane that is this width at the 24 feet. We have um, this side wall will end up plotting out this direction. Uh, we have it across the back and we also have the side where it's just generally cutting off, you know, probably right around here. But again, that's our cone, uh, our cone of vision. Okay, so that takes care of the grid. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and um, we'll go ahead and plot that out in, in the next one. All right, so 40 minutes to set up the grid and we've got a good sound structure to work from.